Introduced as a term in Bruce Bethke's short story Cyberpunk, and popularized following William Gibson's impactful Neuromancer, Cyberpunk is a genre of science fiction that offers a wealth of exciting titles for interested readers to devour. Hi, I'm Michael Leverts, and this is Fit to be Read. <laughs> Cyberpunk is a subgenre of science fiction featuring a lawless or dystopian atmosphere among a computer or artificial intelligence or future technology impacted culture or society riddled with marginalized individuals, outcasts, punks, dissenters, misfits, or degenerates. In today's episode, I'll share with you my top 10 recommendations for a great cyberpunk reading experience. This episode anchors a week of cyberpunk content on my channel. For a deeper dive, check on my other Cyberpunk Week episodes, including What is Cyberpunk? The Origins of Cyberpunk? Are These Novels Cyberpunk? And more. Now on to the list. Honorable mentions are The Red First Light by Linda Nagata, Dr. Adder by K.W. Jeter, Hardwire by Walter John Williams, Nova by Samuel R. Delaney, Babel 17 by Samuel R. Delaney, do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep by Philip K. Dick, and The Stars My Destination by Alfred Bester. Most of these books were synopsized on my previous Cyberpunk Week episode, Are These Books Cyberpunk? Because the criteria for this list is based on my instinct to recommend cyberpunk reading, novels that really embody cyberpunk or represent something very compelling in the genre, rather than a ranking of favorite reads, these titles were designated as honorable mentions. I also need to mention Mirror Shades, an anthology of cyberpunk short stories. This anthology, published in 1984, includes foundational and influential cyberpunk short stories from William Gibson, John Shirley, Pat Cadigan, Lewis Shiner, and others. Coming in at number 10 is Alistair Reynolds' Chasm City, published in 2001. I'm really starting off with a bang here, as Chasm City is the least cyberpunk of the novels on the list, and I'm slipping it in at the end of the list as it might also be more appropriately tagged cyberpunk adjacent and is the least pure cyberpunk relative to the others on this top 10. If this weren't a cyberpunk top 10, this would be higher among the 10 listed books. I recommend Chasm City for those who have an interest in dipping their toes into cyberpunk but aren't interested in jumping into the deep end just yet. Chasm City is 700 pages of excellent storytelling and world building and has its moments of offering a taste of cyberpunk including some dark and decimated world world building with ruined buildings and machinery dystopian noir futuristic elements people having the ability to upload memories to computers nano machinery and nanotech plague affecting both the mechanical and the organic Chasm City fits into Reynolds' Revelation Space Universe, and I recommend reading it along with that series as there are connections, but the book is also easily read as a standalone. Because the story features two main storylines that converge, this is a good cyberpunk starter kit read, as Reynolds gives you a break from the atmosphere each time the perspective changes. Number 9 is Sinners by Pat Cadigan, published in 1991. There aren't a great deal of female authors in the early years of cyberpunk that are recognized for their contribution to the genre. Pat Cadigan delivers a wild, unique, big ideas, trippy cyberpunk classic with Sinners. Sinners also delivers a strong essence of rebellion, drugs, music, misfit and outcast behavior, and a tech-impacted future America society plugged into the net. Most interesting in the novel is an examination of the human condition as it relates to technology and specifically the impact of our connection to the net and experiencing alternate realities. There were strong Matrix vibes in this story that begins with a giant corporation releasing newly invented socket technology to a public ready and willing to consume it. Surely nothing will go wrong here. Number eight is Diaspora by Greg Egan. Like Chasm City, Diaspora is a book that will either work for you right away in the first 50 pages, or it won't. Unlike Sinner's character work is mostly neglected, and that's okay. This is an ideas and ambiance novel that is intellectually challenging and evokes deep philosophical questions, especially in regards to identity, relationships, love, consciousness, and immortality, at times at the expense of storytelling. 
Egan is the master of hard science fiction, and this, for me, is one of his top three novels. In Diaspora, humanity has transformed and taken three different paths. Most popular are the Polices, becoming part of a computer network virtual world. There are the Gleisners, who have opted for robotic bodies, most of whom have left the Earth for the stars. And finally, the Fleshers, who have retained their human form. The Fleshers stay put and do some interesting things with genetic manipulation. I love science fiction because it explores and imagines what other worlds, futures, or races might look like. Egan's imagination of what humanity looks like in the future is breathtaking. In presenting this vision, he makes use of wormholes and other dimensions, virtual reality, cybernetics, nanotech, evolution, and quantum physics. I recommend this novel for those who just heard that last sentence and got excited, and not for those who heard that last sentence and immediately checked out. On to number seven. I initially planned to limit the list to only one book per author, one of the reasons why Egan's Permutation City isn't on this list, but I just might consider making an exception for William Gibson or Neil Stevenson, maybe. Published in 1993, number seven is Virtual Light by William Gibson. Much of this story takes place in near-future San Francisco. Gibson predicts a giant geography-altering California earthquake and, giving snow crash vibes of a sort, suggests a United States that has fractured into smaller states. The earthquake separates an area and bridge from the rest of California that becomes sort of an encampment for the homeless and outcasts and really delivers a lot of the character of this novel. The more sexy element of the book are the data-rich virtual light VR glasses that allow the user to experience an altered reality. The bridge people and socioeconomic examination presented in the book is the real star. I recommend this as a second chance book for those who didn't love or vibe with Gibson's Neuromancer. This book is perhaps a more accessible or easier to engage with story with deeper characters. Number six, Altered Carbon by Richard Morgan, published in 2002. Altered Carbon is book one of Morgan's Takashi Kovacs series. This is a strange murder mystery sci-fi, and the first-person narrator victim is the one investigating his death. In this gritty noir cyberpunk novel, human consciousness can be downloaded and uploaded to human shells called sleeves. This is a fast-paced thrill ride. The counterculture, character elements, noir imagery, and clear human technology merging presents a strong modern cyberpunk vision. Altered Carbon is not light fare, and I'd really recommend it for those who like gritty, rough around the edges noir, and are not put off by occasionally confusing or vulgar prose, or introduction of random new technology. I'd of course also recommend it for folks who avoid watching sci-fi TV adaptations until they've read the book. Number five, River of Gods by Ian MacDonald, published in 2004. I immediately lean into recommending the novel for its future divided India setting. India and frankly most non-Western countries are underrepresented in stories of the future. This is not a title to tread into lightly. MacDonald presents nine different POVs, chapter after chapter in this complex story about artificial intelligence. River of Gods is set in 2047, so it's not too far future. There are both Indian and American characters in the novel, and I will say that, not surprisingly, the storytelling has an obvious Western viewpoint. It's also clear, though, that MacDonald is no novice when it comes to India, and it's not just presenting a romanticized and exotic atmosphere. What I really enjoy about the novel is that MacDonald presents very interesting characters, including a cop, a gangster, a politician, a biologist, a journalist, an AI, and others. Though nine POVs may sound daunting, many of the plot lines intersect early on, and we don't have to wait to be drawn in. The novel offers so much, a new gender introduction, genetic engineering, politics, AI of course, cybernetic conflict, pocket universes, and more. This is great literature with wonderful prose, real characters, interesting cyberpunk representation, and it is a terrific, ambitious, and unique science fiction novel. Number four, The Wind-Up Girl by Paolo Bacci Gallupi. This was published in 2009. This also gets tagged as biopunk, a close cousin or perhaps nephew to cyberpunk. I think we're safe enough just calling this solid cyberpunk or dystopian, 
If we lean into the high-tech biotech elements as satisfying the cyber criteria, the book dumps you right into the thick of it. This is a world ripped apart by plague and famine. The story is set in Bangkok. This is set in a really dark future where the Monsantos of the world control everything because food, or more specifically calories, are hard to come by. Bachi Galubi definitely serves the punk element. Amiko is a genetically modified human, a wind-up girl, forced to work in a sex club. Because wind-ups developed in Japan are illegal in Bangkok, Amiko is owned by a dirtbag club owner who bribes the powers that be to look the other way. Amiko is constantly abused and sexually humiliated by patrons of the club. The savagery that she endures is relentless and it's really difficult to witness. We root for her to escape to an area where other wind-ups are rumored to be living free of oppression. Another early POV character known as the Tiger of Bangkok is fed up with the seed and calorie companies and the threat that they possess to this corrupt Bangkok. The Tiger does all he can to be a thorn in the side of these farangs or detested foreign opportunistic businessmen. The most interesting high-tech elements of the novel are, as you might expect, from the biopunk tag, biotechnologies. This is a great read for those who are more familiar with foundational cyberpunk from the 80s and 90s and have exhausted most of the basics and are perhaps curious and open-minded to more modern themes that the subgenre is exploring. Number three is The Diamond Age by Neil Stevenson. Stevenson is all in with amazing and inventive nanotechnology and other wild technology in this highly engaging novel. The world building is really precise, and as to be expected, the vocabulary is elevated. The story features two primary storylines that eventually intersect. Most engaging is the one that follows main character Nell and her sort of coming of age. Nell lives in a slum territory on an artificial island in the vicinity of Shanghai. She comes to possess a stolen copy of a unique interactive book that influences her life and development. The book, or primer, was originally meant for some rich kid from an important aristocratic family. Sucks for them. Hierarchical socioeconomic models, marginalized individuals, and reliance on nanotech and other future tech deliver the cyberpunk vibes in this Stevenson epic. Number two, William Gibson's 1984 cyberpunk foundational classic, Neuromancer. If this list was most important cyberpunk novels to read, it would probably be a sin to not have this at number one. Frankly, if I flipped this in the number one book on this list, I'd be comfortable with it. Neuromancer is often the first book that anybody thinks of when they hear cyberpunk. It delivers counterculture, punk, misfit, outcast characters, a dark and seedy future Tokyo, out of control urban sprawl on the eastern coast of future United States, and cyberspace, or the Matrix, a virtual digital landscape that hackers can jack into. In Neuromancer, down on his luck protagonist, an anti-hero case is a hacker. He and some other shady characters are recruited by Armitage, a former military commander of some esteem. All of them, however, including Armitage, are having their strings pulled by Wintermute and advanced artificial intelligence. Case is especially vulnerable to the string pulling because Wintermute has a solution for a terrible physical condition given to Case by his former crime syndicate employers from whom he hacked and stole valuable data. Wintermute has selected this crew for a heist, a heist that turns out to be much more than advertised. And the moment we've all been waiting for, my number one cyberpunk reading recommendation, published in 1992, Neil Stevenson's Snow Crash. Stevenson right away smacks you in the face with the cool, the quirky, the punk, and yes, the corny. It is more cool than it is corny. Sticking for some reason to physical contact directed at you dear viewers metaphors, Stevenson will sweep you right off your feet right away with a high energy, high stakes pizza delivery and an introduction to our two very cool protagonists, hero protagonist and YA. Hero, among other things, is a hacker, a sword fighter, pizza delivery guy working for the mafia, and he lives in a dilapidated storage unit. YA is a courier who is more than willing to shun the law. She embodies a unique brand of punk attitude, and she gets around on her futuristic skateboard by pooning or latching onto vehicles using a cable with a magnetic attachment. Hero and YA get wrapped up in a scheme against some bad guys who are spreading a virus in the online virtual reality metaverse that can crash both the user's computer 
as well as their mind in the physical world. Like Neuromancer, Snow Crash hosts a great deal of prescient ideas, most notably Stevenson's invention, the metaverse. Thank you for watching. I'm Michael Levert, and this is Fit to be Read. He's a true hacker, he's a protagonist, and Snow Crash is ready to fight. We need you, hero.